This is mini lecture 4.1, What is a Group? It's based on information found in Chapter 4 of My Sociology. The basic insight of sociology is that individuals are largely influenced by the groups to which they belong. So groups is a major topic in sociology. Let's explore that. The first thing we have to ask ourselves is, what is a group? Well, the simplest way to define a group is to say that it has three characteristics. And this differentiates a group from other collections of people. A group has to have at least two people, two or more people, to make a group. And those people have to interact. They can't just be standing around in the same place. And finally, they have to have a group identity. They refer to themselves as we. This is our group. There are other collections of people that would not be considered a group in the sociological sense. Uh, for example, a crowd is just people that are in the same place at the same time. And this is not a group because they do not necessarily interact or have a group identity. A category is merely people who share the same social status. Social status is something that we've learned about in previous chapters in my sociology. It is a, a social status is a uh, social position like butcher, baker, candlestick maker, male, female, young, old. All third grade teachers would be an example of a category. But a category is not a group because all third grade teachers may not even know each other or ever meet or ever interact. They simply are have the same status. And that's useful to study because people who have the same status may have uh, other things in common, such as political views. Finally, an aggregate is a collection of people that is not a, social, a social group. An aggregate is simply a statistical grouping, usually created by researchers in order to explain the data that they've collected. For example, suppose I did a survey and I asked people their opinions about a particular product that I'm selling. Uh, what type of toothpaste do you prefer? And I could report uh, what the everyone in the survey says is their favorite toothpaste, their second favorite, and so forth. Uh, or I could get more specific and create statistical groups that are meaningful for my study. For example, men over 30 prefer X brand of toothpaste, while men under 30 prefer a Y brand, if that were the case. So an aggregate is simply a statistical grouping that uh, is used often by researchers. And then there are different types of social groups. Uh, primary groups, secondary groups, in-groups, out-groups, peer groups, reference groups. A primary group is usually small and it is a group that is usually informal. If there's leadership in there, it's informal leadership. Uh, it's not very, it's not a, it's not a highly structured group. Um, and it doesn't exist to meet a specific goal. It may simply exist for the sake of existing. In contrast to that, a secondary group is one that is usually larger, has some kind of formal organization, and has uh, often has formal leadership, maybe even formal requirements for belonging that one must meet to belong to the group. And secondary groups exist to meet a goal. So an example of a primary group would be a family. Uh, you don't have to have a special criteria to be a member of the family. If you belong to this family, if you're born into this family, you're part of the family. Um, and families don't exist to achieve a certain goal. They exist because they are a family. They are an end in themselves, 
not a means to an end. An example of a secondary group might be a political party. The political party may be large in, no, in the number of people who belong to it. And it exists to reach a goal, to perhaps get the candidates in their party elected to office. And, and, the, and it usually has a formal structure. It has a formal structure, formal leadership, specific roles designated for different members of the group. One person might be in charge of speech writing, another person might be in charge of uh, publicity, another per person might be in charge of fundraising, and so on. And so it's a more formal group, and it may be so large that many of the members don't even know each other. So that would be an example of a secondary group. Now groups aren't always strictly secondary or primary. It's not as if every group fits in one of two polarized categories. Instead, it is uh, some groups are mostly primary, and some groups are mostly secondary, and then there's some groups that kind of fall somewhere in between. 